conversations with our queens from across the world. They are entertaining, educating, with tons of passion. Welcome to the show, Queens Forever. Ooh la la la, the world truly is a magnificent place to live in, especially with all the beauty queens representing their respective countries. They truly are the pride of the nation. And I am supremely delighted to truly welcome absolutely the stunningly gorgeous. I want to request you to keep guessing about our guest today. And at the same time, I welcome you all on Indus Television and a humble thanks to V International and River Comics for truly making lives colorful and interesting. As they always say, it's good to feel attractive on the outside, but being smart on the inside is still better. Truly a pleasure for all of us to invite a very renowned Bollywood actress. She's breathtakingly beautiful. May we please put our hands together and make sure you don't blink your eyes as we welcome our former beauty pageant queen, Femina Miss India Universe 2004, absolutely the ravishing, supremely talented, and of course, the charming and the beauty, Tanushri Datta. A whole lot of welcome to you, Tanushri. Such a pleasure having you here on our show, Queens Forever. Thank you so much, Simran. Thank you for having me on your show. It's such a delight to be a part of a show like this, which revisits all these beautiful memories that I have. Tanishri, you know, you've been very, very lucky uh, because hum sab, puri dunia, aapki, you know, aashik hai, right from Ashik Banaya, aapne, aapne to sabka dil jeet liya, let me tell you this. At the same time, you know, when you really won the crown, which is one of its kind, extremely unique. So tell us at first about that beautiful winning moment. I want you to feel nostalgic about this. And how was it when your name was taken? And the winner is, so please tell us something about that precious moment. You know, Simran, I had dreamt of that moment from the time I was a little girl. And I had seen the pageant, Miss India pageant, for the first time hiding behind my mom's so far at night, uh, I saw uh, Aishwarya and Shushmita won the crown. And ever since that, I dreamt of wearing the crown. I just somewhere was not sure if someone like me from a small town with no connections, with no background and, uh, you know, glamour and media would ever actually win it. So even when I was taking part in the pageant, there was there was a little bit of a always this apprehension that, yeah, maybe I'll make it to the top 10, top five, but I don't know if I am the winner. So when I was progressing through the pageant, you know, I was getting shortlisted to top 15, top 10, top five. I started believing. And when they were announcing the top three, I, if you notice the recordings, I actually at one point of time looked at the other contestant when you know, Miss World was announced, Miss uh, Asia Pacific, um, uh, sorry, whatever the other uh, titles right. were announced. There was only one title left, which was Miss India Universe. And so I knew that it was either this or nothing, right? So I knew because all the other titles were announced. If my name didn't get announced, it means that I've not got any title. So I actually looked at the girl next to me because in that moment, I was like, oh, maybe she's getting it because I thought she was more beautiful. I thought she was, you know, I just don't know. So when they announced my name, I can't explain the feeling. It felt like my heart expanded, you know, my soul <laughs> expanded. It was like a blessing from God. I have, I have, I don't remember uh, the number of times, maybe a very few number of times that I have actually felt that, you know, it feels, feels like grace coming down on you. And in that moment, my life changed forever. And I believe that all of us worked hard. Uh, all the girls worked hard. We were all beautiful. We were all intelligent. We all spoke well. But I believe I won the crown because I was blessed that day. And I can never forget that feeling. It was. It is that one feeling that I will carry in my heart forever. It will remain in my memory. No matter where I get, Bollywood, Hollywood, no matter what I achieve in life, I will always remember that moment because that was the defining moment of my life and it stays, you know. You know, even when you expressed right now, we just felt as it was really happening and I got goosebumps 
Oh my God. <laughs> and, and my heartbeat stopped. And I was just waiting, you know, for you to express yourself. So, so wonderful. Uh, so Tanushri, I really want to know, uh, you know, of course you said it was, you know, the grace, the blessing. And let me also tell you, we have never come across the designs of the crowns in such a unique manner. So it truly is unique. And it's the first time even on our show that we're having such a beautiful design, uh, you know, which, which no one has ever, you know, thought of or would think of, you know. So that's really, really very special. So right from 1994 that you dreamt of, you know, wearing the crown. So tell us about the preparation that went into winning the crown. Since how long were you preparing for your 2004 pageant? Because in 2003, you know, you represented Femina Miss India. So how long did it take for you to prepare yourself? So I won the pageant in 2004 and I represented India at Miss Universe in 2004 itself. Um, okay. I saw the pageant for the first time, for the first time that it came into my awareness that beauty pageants exist because I was still a child. I was not aware of the world. I ended up seeing it, you know, uh, hiding behind my mom's sofa at night because I was not allowed to watch uh, TV at night. It was a mm -hmm. school night. And the dream came into my soul. And after that, there wasn't really much preparation for the next, um, you know, quite a few years because, again, the dream was there, but I didn't really believe that I'll ever make it because when I saw the pageant, I was a kid with uh, soda glasses. I was a kid with really short hair. Uh, I was a kid with uh, teeth coming out like Bugs Bunny you know I used to be made fun in school like the boys they made me cry in school because they would make fun of me and call me toothpaste they would have weird Hindi names like Dantori and all that because my teeth were out I had glasses my hair my mom kept it short so when I looked at myself in the mirror I didn't see a pageant queen I didn't see someone even remotely uh, resembling a pageant queen and I told myself how dare you how dare you think that you can be a pageant queen looking like that you know because I was always intelligent and practical pragmatic so when I looked at myself and what I felt in my heart in terms of my desires and dreams were vastly different luckily when I was in class uh, nine uh, grade uh, grade seven eight and nine my mother got it in her heart that oh my god look at this girl she's a geek she looks like a geek. She's like, I need to fix her up. Otherwise, I don't know how I'm going to find a good husband for her. So my mother, <laughs> my mother started grooming me, be not because of pageantry or anything, because I never told my mom, I never told my dad, I never told anybody. It was a secret in my heart that I, it was an, it was an ambition. It was a desire that I secretly, uh, you know, held in my heart. I wouldn't dare to tell my parents because if I told them, I don't know how they would react. Typical middle-class family studies, you know, even sports was a big deal for our household. But my mom decided to groom me because she's like, oh, she's going to turn 18 and she's going to turn, you know, 20 or whatever. And soon we're going to have to start looking for a groom for her. And looking like this, she's not going to find a husband. So she took me to the doctor to, you know, get my teeth fixed. She let me grow my hair so that I can behave a little feminine. And, you know, behave like a girl and be like a girl. She got me contact lenses because I was so used to my soda glasses that I was always like this, you know, like your body language is always geeky. And, uh, you know, and I was a school topper. I was a class topper. I topped my grades. So I had no reason to look uh, sassy and, you know, all of that because I was already getting a lot of respect in school uh, from my teachers and everything. I was touted to be like maybe an IS officer or some some sort you know doctor engineer all those things people were thinking um so I got groomed because of a completely different reason but the moment I got groomed and I started getting attention I realized that hey I look good and okay it's not that bad <laughs> you know I I I because I could see the difference right when you've seen yourself in the mirror looking looking like a geek you know looking so off and you know you see all the pretty girls and you know you're not that and then suddenly you're turning into someone who's easy on the eye you start thinking hey maybe I can model so that's when I started taking part in school modeling competitions I won the Miss School pageant then I went to high school and I took part in the high school pageants I won Miss College 
then I took part in some more local fashion shows, local beauty pageants. I won those. And then my confidence grew over the next couple of years. So say grade 10, grade 11, grade 12. And then first year, second year of college, I was fully into professional modeling in Pune where I was studying. And I was winning these beauty pageants, local beauty pageants. And that kind of made me feel like, yes, maybe I can try for Miss India. But I still got rejected in 2003. I got rejected in 2003, broke my heart, but I tried in 2004 again, and then I won. So that was This awesome. is unbelievable. This is truly one of the most interesting stories. And moreover, the way you're narrating it, just like a director would do it. You know, of course, you belong to the film world, but it's so beautiful and it's unbelievable. Yes, I know. I've forgotten that we need to take a very short break. While I want you to download the app, River Comics, you are here watching us on Indus TV with We International as well. We'll see you guys super soon. back post the break and it is one of the most interesting stories i've ever come across the pageantry story here with tanushri datta so tanushri you already face a lot of challenges since the time you decided or dreamt of wearing the crown but what was the real challenge in 2004 especially in 2003 you know when you really didn't qualify for the top 30 so tell us something about the challenges you faced at the time of the pageant so like i said 2003 i was super confident because I was modeling in Pune. I had won all these beauty pageants and I was this hotshot local Pune model. Pune is a small town close to Bombay and I had done some ad campaigns in Bombay. So I thought I was big shit, you know, and I thought I was getting into Miss India. I was winning and everything, but then I got rejected outright. Like 2003 was a slap on my face and that humbled me. You know, it humbled me to think that no matter what I've achieved in life so far, I can never assume 
that the next step is going to be like a cake walk and it's going to be easy and at the same time i had to gather the pieces of my broken heart i i came back home to jamshedpur to my parents i cried buckets i cried throughout the 2003 pageant i was watching on tv and my parents were like it's okay you can try again 2004 big deal just try again and i was like what if i get rejected again and they like try again so 2004 I tried again. By then, I had already done a lot of professional modeling in Bombay, so I was, you know, relaxed and calm. I was not excited. I was not like overconfident. I was just about confident and very grounded because working makes you very humble. You know, you're working with people in a professional setup. I had struggled in Bombay. I'd done music videos, ads, ramp shows. I was a mature, seasoned, uh, new model. You know. so i took part like that now another challenge started for me when i actually was in the pageant the challenge was that all the girls who were participants in the pageant they all came from most of them came from very wealthy families so they had designer clothes and they had better stuff and i was still uh, you know from a middle class background and i was still uh, you know a, a kind of just about working model in bombay and i obviously couldn't afford the hot shot designer stuff i had good stuff but not designer stuff so the challenge during the pageant was to keep myself motivated and my own morale up because as a young person i i, I was 20 years old right you always tend to compare yourself with others oh she's got a better height than me she's taller than me oh she's skinnier than me oh she's got better features like we all have ideas of beauty you know we look at somebody else and we are like oh she's more beautiful or worse we think oh she's got better clothes than me you know and sometimes uh, i would take it in the good spirit but sometimes one or two girls would even tell me that tanushree you anyways have no hope so be happy if you make it to the top 15 <laughs> yeah, i was told that yeah, i was told that a couple of times and my response to that was i agreed with them i agreed with them so when i was told that uh, you know the girls one or two girls were like oh you won't make it to the top 3 you'll make it to the top 15 at most and make sure you you know kind of enjoy the process so i was like yeah yeah i would so the challenge was to believe i never i was never able to believe you know i only believed the day i was walking the ramp on the day of the pageant and that is why i use words like grace blessing because on the day of the pageant i felt there was something on me which was unique and it started 3 days before the pageant i felt different there was no reason for me to feel different because i was still i still had the same clothes i was still the same the girls who were skinny became more skinny after training the girls who were tall looked taller after training so i was still the same height i was still the same person but Three days before the pageant, I don't know. There was something on me, some blessing on me, which was enabling me to see everything. And when I walked on that stage, I felt like a queen. That moment when I was when I walked onto the stage, I felt like I owned the stage. I felt like everybody was here for me. I felt like this is for me. I don't know why I felt like that. And the entire pageant went smoothly. and i was so meditative i didn't think there was no fear no insecurity nothing i prayed before getting on stage and i was just blank i was just peaceful and i knew that i've given my best i've done my best and whatever happens from here um i've i've done my best you know and i told god whatever you have plans for me i accept that i accept that whether winning not winning whatever it is you know best and i walked onto the stage and then i won <laughs> so it was it, it was just uh, i'm just watching a narration i think i'm actually watching a film you know the way you're narrating you know every single sentiment and feeling emotion this is truly unbelievable so tell me what was the best memory during your pageant experience you know which you carry with you i mean uh we did we do understand your peers telling you about you be in the top 15 uh, which other memory you really carrying with you, uh, which is very fresh even now i have a lot of memories which are fresh during the pageant uh one of the hardest things was initially was the workout regime 
because what happened out of uh, 28 or 30 girls, about five of us were singled out to be overweight. Uh, now, if you see my pictures back in the day, I definitely don't look overweight, but pageantry has certain standards, you know, because you've got to fit into the gowns and clothes made by those designers who are sponsoring the pageant. Uh, so they're all standard sizes and you have to fit into that. So I was put in the overweight section. That was one thing I was like, oh my God, I, I'm already labeled overweight. How am I going to make, make it to the cut? So I was put on uh, an extra workout regime, which mean, meant that apart from the regular one hour workout, me and five other girls, we had to run up and down a 10 story building 10 times and then join the other girls for the rest of the training because we were like two or three kilos overweight. Our diet was the same as all the other girls, but no carb, no sugar, no a lot of things. That was really hard, but we got used to it. Then I remember um, the grooming sessions, the training sessions. And, you know, I remember it was a very intense environment, full of excitement, full of hope. Um, the girls were nice, actually, you know, like, uh, like I had heard a lot of stories that the girls are going to be very catty and bitchy. It wasn't like that. We were actually kind of nice to each other. Um, you know, more or less, I think we all got along really well. Um, one thing I remember, which I will never forget, is as we were progressing in the pageant and getting shortlisted, I could sense their pain, you know. Um, like we were like 28 or 30 of us, right? Then while the pageant is going on, the 28 or 30 became 15 and 15 became 10 and 5. Um, there was a lot of frenzy backstage because we had to quickly go and change. Those of us who made the cut had to go backstage, change quickly, change makeup, get back on stage. But even despite all of that frenzy and busyness, some part of me was very alive and active and compassionate towards what the other girls were feeling, the ones who were not making it to the cut. Because once the top 15 were announced, the other 15 knew that they were not making it. Once the top 10 were announced, those other five knew that they're not making it. They're not, they've lost the chance to win the crown. So that was one thing that I felt intensely. I'm an empath. So I, I feel the feelings of others. You know, that's something that has been a, a feature of mine throughout my life. I, I can sense what others feel and I can sense what others think sometimes, you know. Um, and I could feel the sorrow and the pain of the other girls, but they still had to put on a smile and come back on stage, you know, because... For every designer round, everybody has to be on stage for the lineup. And some of these girls didn't make the cut, but they still had to be on stage, smile, be appreciative of and be encouraging of others. They were so graceful, the girls. They came to me and they congratulated me as I was moving forward. And I, was, I would accept their congratulations, but I could see in their eyes the pain. You know, I could sense their pain. And that is something I will never forget my whole life. Uh, that taught me that behind every achievement, whenever one person makes it to the top, there are so many others who tried and gave their best and perhaps deserved it as much. But, you know, for whatever reason, maybe that day they were not feeling up to it or maybe, you know, maybe it was not their time. Uh, there is a lot of pain behind every one person's achievement. And that's something that I, I remember. I remember that. And that made me humble even after I won the crown. Um, so this is... It's such a deep thought, which uh, I, I think none of us realize. I'm sorry to say this, but most of us have never even realized it. That behind that one achiever, we always, you know, look at ourselves to being on that top, where you, of course, alone. But you don't realize that people you're leaving behind know what's going on in their hearts. Oh my God, interesting conversations. You're watching us here on Indus TV. And we are truly thankful to be International and River Comics for truly the most amazing Queens Forever with Anushri Dattas, not just inspiring us, but telling us and teaching us about life. Life in totality and how does it, how does it really go about when at first you win the title in the country and then you go on to represent your country as the pride of the nation on the international arena. Let's talk more about this right after this supremely short break. We'll see you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for We International Founder, President, Chairman, Mr. Bharat Goradia, Bollywood star. Good 
India with legendary singers from Indian music industry. He believes in spreading smiles over everyone's faces. Sports champion. Award and Bharat Gaurav Pride of India Award winner Mr. Bharat Goradia has been innumerably awarded across the globe for his outstanding work in the field of promoting Indian arts and culture all over the world. La la la. Oh my God, this is unbelievable. But what was the difference, Tanushree, of, you know, being at a pageant in the country, in your country, India, and then representing India at Miss Universe? How difficult or how comfortable was it? Because you were very comfortable with people. And as we see you on screen, very compatible. At the same time, since you had a lot of compassion, very easy at winning hearts. What was the difference? So, yes, that was another challenge. So 2004 was a year of challenges for me because I feel like I was shifting realities very fast, you know, from a from an ordinary girl to a, a model to a Miss India to then a representative for India at the Miss Universe pageant. All eyes are on me and a lot of expectations, a lot of training and much more hardcore training than Miss India because now... I'm not competing with Indian girls. I'm competing with foreign girls, you know. And we all know being from the Indian community that uh, some other races, they are genetically blessed, you know, with, with taller height and uh, physique and everything. So I knew that I was going to compete with the American uh, pageant winner. I was going to compete with Australia. I was going to compete with UK and like a whole bunch of countries. So I started training on the double. I, was, I would train two hours every day. I, my diet became much more stricter. Um, I was trained in makeup, grooming, all of that, a little more, you know, professional style. Uh, when I got there, I was, you know, at first you're not treated as royalty because there are so many queens from all over the world because everybody's a queen. So you have to make your space. And like you said, you have to win hearts rather than win a place in someone's mind because there are 150 queens, right? So, so I felt a bit lost initially, you know, and I was like, oh my God, everybody's a queen over here. It's not just me. But slowly, slowly, as I eased into that process, I made friends. I was affable. I was pleasant. I made sure that I stick with my schedule, whatever the schedule was of the pageant. And the Miss Universe pageant people were really nice and they were really kind and they were really, 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 really hospitable. You know, they treated us really well, took us around. We met dignitaries of state of the country that we were at, the host country, which was Ecuador. Um, we had gala banquet dinners, seven course meals. We were given beautiful, fantastic, lavish gifts. Uh, so that was a fantastic part of it. And I really enjoyed it. Actually, Miss Universe was an eye opener for me. For me, it was my first time representing India at an international platform. And I went with, you know, like an open mind and open heart. Uh, the people in the host country received me very well. So my initial apprehensions were gone. A week, two weeks into the pageant, I was a hot favorite, hit favorite amongst the local crowd. Every time I came on stage, they cheered for me. And, uh, you know, the pageant went on really well. I made it to top 10 and I was really glad that I placed somewhere. Uh, there was a little bit of disappointment that I did not win the crown, but I guess I kind of left it to God's will uh, that, you know, again, I said, okay, if this is your will, I accept it. I'm glad that I even got this opportunity, you know. so You are, you are, 
Absolutely, absolutely. That's your perception. You've always been a winner for us. And let me tell you, Tanushri, you don't have just Indian fans. You have fans from across the world. Because everybody is extremely proud of you being a winner. Uh, because what the main queens wouldn't have really done in their life is what you've done. So you have already been a super achiever. What is that one thing you like to give advice to all those who truly look forward to, you know, being in your footsteps at the same time being inspired by you? What is that one advice you like to give them? for the pageantry world so my advice to the girls would be to be authentic and um, you know girls who aspire to get into pageantry um to be authentic to read and listen to previous pageant winners because you learn a mm-hmm. lot from observing from listening to others who walk the same path um because when you are inexperienced we often tend to be in our own head a lot we assume that you know this is how it is and this is how it is always learn from experts people who have walked the path before they've walked the talk you know um and prepare and train and never assume what an environment is going to be because when you're actually in the environment it may be way different from what you've imagined all these years you know um as a hoga vaisa hoga it must be like this no when you're in the in the place you have to be present you are fully prepared you 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 prepared yourself you are there and then you take it each day as it goes a lot of times people try to impress too much you know uh girls try to impress too much or they try to get confident in a way that it kind of comes off too much of putting you have to uh be calm you know and a very good tool to imbibe that quality is by working like i said i worked a lot before i actually took part in the main miss india pageant i had done these local pageants i had worked as a model and then i took part in the main pageant so i was very grounded i was very grounded in reality i was very humble i was very um, relaxed and this is something the miss india organizers told me after you know afterwards when i obviously got talking to them you know because i was a pageant queen and i had to interact with them every day i actually asked them you know my handlers i asked them i said what was it that kept me apart from the others you know because i know that the organizers also have you know they do put in they do make notes and remarks because right you know it's it, those remarks val- carry weight because they are selecting somebody to represent an entire country overseas so what they said was we knew in our heart we knew with your conduct and behavior that you you were going to be a very responsible miss india that you were going to be a very grounded miss india and you were going to be a very professional miss india we don't want girls who give us trouble after winning because after winning the crown we don't want to go through the trouble of taking back the crown or disciplining the miss india right so they knew that i was going to be you know on point and in india as well as abroad when i'm you know representing my country so that's something to keep keep uh, be aware of you know everyone who's watching the show here with us today on indus tv you know is eligible to become the queen you know the way you're narrating and giving every little bit those nuances of how to stand out and of course to have that oom factor we all owe it only to tanushri datta so tanushri we have some interesting questions for you we're going to get towards the rapid fire as we know that yes uh, we sort of know who inspired you but i'd like to once again ask you in the rapid fire question uh, which of the beauty queens truly inspired you i was inspired by a lot of beauty queens uh, lara datta shifita sen aishwarya rai uh, these are the top names that come to my mind you know uh, because they were remarkable they they were truly remarkable Which favorite food did you give up on because of the pageant during those three months or six months of the pageantry? Your Everything. favorite food? Everything. Everything. <laughs> I pretty much ate what they gave me, you know, and that's how it is. Like you don't have a say on what you want to eat, uh, but they feed you well. They just feed you very controlled portion uh, food, so it was okay. You know, with the stringent schedules that you have. during the pageantry uh, if you had to do makeup in 5 minutes you know what is it that you're going to really accentuate on and highlight just 5 minutes of makeup you have and you just have to be ready well i actually did have just about 15 or 20 minutes at miss universe 
because our call time used to be 6 o'clock in the morning and 6:15 uh, or 6:30 we had to be down for breakfast so i would have to have a shower you know freshen up and do makeup and i would dab some uh, you know little base and mascara kajal and just a little bit of gloss uh, evenings was when i really decked up and what about your favorite color for the evening gown which is your favorite color i i think uh, my favorite color would be white and red uh, i wore white uh, and i wore gold for one of the photo shoot rounds at miss universe but if i had a chance to do it over i would probably wear red <laughs> you know now that you have beautiful experience of being you know in our film world as well and you've been one of the most top most actresses who been loved and adored and admired for the kind of work that you've done what do you think was the best part of the pageant which really helped you you know excel in you know bollywood or the indian film fraternity also as an actress i think my um, you know opportunities the opportunities that i got in bollywood were because of the pageant was because of the crown so i think the crown itself was what prepared me for bollywood because i i don't think i would have gotten a chance you know uh, in the mainstream had i not been wearing a crown or even if i did get a chance it would probably take me many years you know um, maybe do television maybe do more ads model a lot do some remarkable work and then get an opportunity in bollywood so i think my crown was directly responsible for me ending up in bollywood wow now we have something very interesting coming your way tanushree there is a gentleman who also loves you adores you and is a big fan of you as much as we all are so as i said it's not just the indians but you know you know every from every country you have fans all across the world not just men but even females so we have our world's number one promoter of art and culture in the united states and he's known as mr india the gentleman maybe please welcome mr bharat goraria ji who has a surprise question for tanushree datta and he's so happy and delighted to meet tanushree how are you doing bharat ji very fine very fine simran it's uh, always a pleasure uh, to be with you a uh, miss india title winner and miss india universe also so what a pleasure surprise to me i am really really glad and lucky. consider myself very lucky anyway tarush ji a very hearty welcome on behalf of our sponsor uh, river comics and we international it, to one of the most outstanding show talk show uh, queens forever and uh, my question related to that only uh, that do you believe that once a queen queens forever yes varad ji thank you so much first of all for uh, having me on the show and uh, thank you for that wonderful question yes i do believe that uh, once a queen always a queen because a beauty pageant such as miss india miss universe and for that matter any beauty pageant in the whole world prepares a young girl prepares a woman you know because today we have beauty pageants even for married women we have beauty pageants for even uh, senior uh, ladies i think a beauty pageant is the most beautiful way of honoring a woman's beauty honoring a woman's integrity and honoring her femininity and to let her know that she's loved she's cared and we appreciate her intelligence beauty and the whole package that she comes with and it's a great training ground for kids you know young young girls who want to <laughs> become confident in their own skin so yes once a queen always a queen and thanks to the love of people like you and you know all the all the indian diaspora uh, i am so grateful and so so humbled uh, that uh, people you know appreciate me and my crown and you know my title and everything uh, thank you so very much what an amazing what a wonderful answer you have given i tell you you have got a wonderful wonderful gift of the gab i mean gift what a wonderful reply you are giving spontaneous that is most important once a <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you you are really you are really really a queen because the way in which you have saved yourself right now it's amazing out of whatever 15 or 20 years have gone by but still you have maintained yourself so nice so nice i mean nobody can say that you have won the title in 2004 everybody can say that you have won the title recently only considering the way in which you have maintained become yourself but i think she's become younger yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> thank but you but anyways uh, 
Tanusha ji, thank you so so very much for sparing your valuable time on behalf of our sponsor River Comics and V International. We are extremely thankful to you for sparing your valuable time, sharing your experiences, and giving us all the words of wisdom and knowledge. And especially to all the young girls who are trying to contest for this title, the wonderful tips which you have given, the confidence you have given to them is amazing, outstanding, of out of this world. So thank you so so very much. I'm wishing you all the very best in all your forthcoming projects, and see you very 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 soon in US again to you. <laughs> thank you, Bharat ji. as you know that i'm boarding the flight this weekend and i will be in us next week and i will oh. be there for 3 months and i will be making yeah. appearances and gracing several events across the us and i will see you there and uh, you know it's always always amazing to interact with my fan base in america and the indian american community i think we'll, after hearing this news all your friends and friends will have a seven day sweet <laughs> they will eat seven days <laughs> because it's a very very surprising because now considering the flight restriction very few people can come and since you are a green card holder and you are coming so it's a great joy for all of us especially your indian friends and friends all across uh, usa a very hearty welcome very very soon to uh, see you in usa thank you so much parat ji absolutely looking forward to see you all this is the beauty of pageants where of course you do have your country people loving you but you also have americans australians and people of all origins loving you simply because of the pageant the girl with the most beautiful aura who's completely soulful like an angel tanushri datta and all you guys have to do is please follow her on her social media handles if you look forward to being the best version of yourself get inspired by tanushri you watching here with us Queens forever only on Indus TV, and we are truly thankful and humbled to have Tanushri Datta here with us. Thank you, Tanushri. Thank you, Baraji, and thank you to yes. Indus TV. Thank you so much, Simran. Thank you so much, Indus TV. Thank you so much, Bharat Baradia Ji, and thank you so much, sponsor River Comics, for inviting me on this show and letting me share my Miss India journey with the entire Indian American diaspora. I am so honored to be here and share my story. and tell you a little bit about my beautiful wonderful pageant life i hope you guys got inspired and i hope you guys you know took a leap out of my little book this is still the beginning very soon we look forward to penning down a book on tanushri datta's beautiful journey and her career as well as of course some film some day pretty soon as where she plays her own art autobiography so thank you so much tanushri this has been supremely special for us and the best show ever till date thank you so much from deep in our hearts and i mean it and i mean it